Hello, welcome back to the farm here in East Hawaii. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about how I take care of my orchids. So this is our orchid corner. As you can see, they're in a variety of conditions. They're not very picky here because we have one of the sort of ideal environments that orchids like, which is high humidity, warm all year round, and we also have poor soil. Um, many orchids thrive in poor soil. They're an early colonizer of new areas or disturbed areas. So you don't actually have to be super duper picky about the kind of soil because many of them, this is totally fine for them. So let me show you just a few of what we have here. This is a bamboo orchid. I just pulled this out of the ground. These are invasive and grow wild where we live. This is a completely happy plant. Um, I just pulled it out today and I can stick it back in the ground just to get you familiar with the different kinds of orchids and what their roots look like. Here's another kind. It's totally fine. This one actually, look, this is blooming. And this was just sitting basically on its side. And this is going to be one that I'll show you how I transplant. This is Here's another one. This one definitely looks like it's ready to transplant. But this is a happy plant. Like you look at, you know, these leaves are a pretty good color. I think it, it had blooms recently. What else do we have? Here's another kind. This kind puts out bulbs. What is this? Bulb Wilberia ex Davis Toms. This puts out bulbs, and this is, I guess, how they move around. So we also have a bunch that, are, um, that aren't that are even sitting in pots. So this is one right here that I rescued from a tree that had um, fallen, and it was burning up in the sun. These are some, this is an active root, but it also has a bunch of dry roots. It was already in a tree, so I just put it back in a tree. Seems to be pretty happy in this bush. And then... This is another one I got out of someone's mulch pile. <laughs> this one's interesting because it makes roots all along its, uh, its stem. And this is just literally sitting in a pile of leaves. It doesn't care. Just to show you a bit more about the kinds of orchids that we have. So like this is a bamboo orchid. It's the same height as me. And this is what it's sitting in. And I can tell you there is about two inches of not even soil here before it's bedrock. This is just like roots and moss, and most of it is actually the roots of this. So the next, so as you can see, this kind of maybe gives you an idea of, whoa, camera person. This might give you an idea about kind of what your orchid, what you're trying to mimic in your orchid at home, for example. So the next thing I'd like to show you is my forest floor potting mix. So orchids, most of the time, they don't grow in soil. They grow in something called medium, which is not exactly soil. It's a growing medium. So I just gathered this in the last half hour. This is stuff from the forest floor. That's why I call it the forest floor mix. As you can see, many of our orchids are growing in the forest floor. This is an orchid, for example. Right, and it's like this is an orchid that I transplanted. This tire is filled with total garbage soil. Nothing else wants to grow in there. So the main thing you want to look at for orchids, especially if you're growing in, in your apartment or your house, is uh, a balance between drainage and uh, ability to hold water. So the main thing you have for holding water that's recommended is moss. This is the sphagnum moss that you've maybe heard about. Um, various kinds of wood chips. These are really great at holding water. Um, but the other thing that you want is drainage. So this should all, you know, you can see kind of how loose it is. There's some soil in here, some mulch, a lot of like, there's a worm, some green litter from the floor, dry litter. Like this is a nice partially decomposed wood. It's very squishy and soft. 
Um, this also has some of like th these little pebbles that we have, which are volcanic cinder. You can use, you know, these are very nice and porous. You can use uh, whatever you want, little pebbles. Um, and an interesting thing is when you go to repot your orchids, you can see what they sort of came with in the store. So let's do this. So the first thing you're going to do is hold by the base and try to pull it out. Okay. So this is a, what we call being highly root bound. So this is very much ready for a bigger pot. It's got a couple red ant nests. You probably don't have that if you're growing indoors. And it looks like it has, what did they plant it in, like wood chips? And sometimes it's really sad. They even have a sponge in the middle. Yeah, look at that. That's just an artificial sponge that's falling apart. The main reason, the main thing you want to think about is that for a lot of orchids, what they're doing is they're not even necessarily getting nutrients from the medium. They kind of hold on to it. The way that that guy is holding on to the, onto the tree. So what do we have? Let's take a look at the condition of these roots. These green roots, that's all healthy, that's good. I think these look pretty healthy. Some of these brown ones, it's hard to tell. If they're black, they're probably dead. If they're completely like bone white and crunchy, they're also probably dead. Actually, let me show you one that I have that is very near death. This is another one that I pulled off of a dead tree. It should be the same variety as the one I have in the bush here. So this was all like, this is all roots. This was all along a large tree trunk. And so this is all dry, pretty much dead. You might even look at this and be like, oh, what is this garbage? Why are you saving it? However, ta -ta 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 -ta, it's alive. And it has a little tiny green growth right there coming off. So this might still live. This might be alive. It's hard to tell. But this is an example of sort of like something that, yeah, there's green here. This is green. This is alive for sure. Something that might look like it's completely dead might actually still be fine and totally salvageable. So this guy, this is the pot that it was in, definitely needs something new. You could split it. Um, the way you want to split is to separate like by bulbs basically. Um, I'm not going to split it right this second. I'm, I'm going to split another one here. I'm just going to show you. Let's give you a nice big pot. I don't know if it's good or bad to transplant when they're blooming. Who knows? So what we're going to do is I'm going to get a nice good mix. And what you want is think about this as kind of like going around and clasping the stuff that you're the medium. So you want it to kind of you want to get a little bit on the bottom. Shove everything in there, nice and nice and cozy. There we go, buddy. Again, if you're doing this at home in your apartment, make sure to put down newspapers because it's going to be messy. As for where to get the potting mix, you know, uh, we have the forest here, so I use the forest floor to make my own mix. You can buy mix at the store. Uh, I used to live in Oakland and I would go to parks and gather moss and like redwood chips and stuff like that and make my own potting mix. That was pretty fun. Get to go and... The main thing when you're gathering from outdoors is to not take everything in a particular site. Always leave something. So like we have a lot of moss that just grows naturally here. I wouldn't like take all of this. I would take like a little bit. Probably I wouldn't go more than 50% of what's there. That way you can have a renewable resource and can, you know, not totally deplete it. All right, we're gonna do one or two more and then I have my water. Let's see what else we can do. I think this will be a good candidate for splitting. 
it's got a whole bunch that are, as you can see, they're basically coming off already. So let's pull this out of its pot. Which one is this? Oh yeah, the berry data stops. All right. I wonder if I already... No, no, look at this. Look at this sad, sad styrofoam. Poor little friend. A lot of the time people are nervous about transplanting orchids, but then like when I, oh, what's this? Is that a gecko egg? Possibly. Into the mint you go. A lot of the time people are like, oh, I'm nervous about transplanting my orchids, but then like you pull them out and you see like the sad conditions that they, they're in from the store and you're like, oh, I can give you, oh, another gecko egg. Nesting location, and you're like, I can give you a better home than that. I can do something much nicer for you. Look at how many little buds there are. Just look at that. So separating, kind of do it. Let's look at the the roots here. What we've got going on. The roots look pretty good, actually. I would say. Oh, there's the sad sponge in the middle. God, I hate these. If you do have dead roots, you know, the official orchid forums or whatever recommend that you cut off dead roots. That might be helpful, especially if they're rotting because the rot can infect the other roots. If they're super dry, you know, I think it's more of an aesthetic thing to get rid of. I'm just trying to get all this freaking styrofoam out of there. All right. These don't look too bad, actually. Hard to say. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and let's see what we can do here. Really tangled in there. And if you're like, oh my god, I can't believe how you're manhandling these, they'll come back. They literally just sit under a bush. Not too bad. You could probably even separate it more, but ooh, that's rotten. I think this is fine. So I'm gonna I'll put one of these back into the pot that it was in and do the other half in another pot. When you have your mix in it like in a bucket, all the light stuff like the moss and stuff goes to the top when it's just sitting there and the heavier stuff goes to the bottom so make sure to mix it up before oh gosh i didn't even do the thing i said to do you don't have to be too too careful i mean i used to be more careful about it but once i got here and i noticed that like like look at this this is covered in moss and it's perfectly happy like these are all covered in moss that and they're you know the leaf litter falls on them and what i think is this is how they would grow in a forest so just let them do their thing all right mossy friend this guy's still up there <laughs> one more Some other plant. And some of this is still good. That's how it is. This is how you're gonna live. You're gonna go back here under the bush. I have stuff sitting on its side. It doesn't care. It's actually happy sitting on its side because then, you know, when they crawl out, they're like, oh, a new spot. I wanna show you one last thing, which is something that is kind of an illustration of how little these guys, oh wow, this literally came out of the soil. So a lot of orchids, can reproduce in multiple ways. So they reproduce from the flower, 
but they can also bud off of the main one. And that's what's happened here. This main one died a long, long time ago. And these guys are just happily growing. Look at this. This is a healthy leaf. And it's grown since I found it. It literally just came out of this thing that I had it sitting in. And let me show you what I had it sitting in. Garbage. This is literal garbage that's been overgrown. This is just roots. There's like no soil in this. There is a worm though, which is good. But this has been totally colonized by roots from the surroundings that grow in from under the pot. Let's do something better for you, little friend. The worm is good. I like the worm. There's two worms. That's good. You guys can stay. Oh, worm egg. That's a worm egg. They have a little family in there. Let's get some mix. Maybe you'll be happier with this. Alright, back under the pot you'll go, or under the bush. And for everyone, I'm going to give them a little water. I like to do warm water, let it drain. This my picture that I transplanted. The, when I used to live in an apartment, what I would do is like every seven, seven days to two weeks, depending on the, you know, how dry it is, I would just set them under a running tap for, uh, of warm water for 30 seconds, let the whole thing drain out like this, and then set it back in like it's pretty container or whatever. You don't want them to sit in water for the most part. Some, some orchids, I would let them sit for a little while and then drain. Anyway, um, and that's basically it, you know. I like to think, oh, I'm giving them that tropical, tropical monsoon rain that they love. Um, here, I don't water these at all. They just do their thing. We have plenty of, you know, rain for the most part. And they, you know, they sit in the shade, so it's not that big a deal. So I hope you enjoyed this video about how I take care of orchids, how I repot them. And if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments. And happy gardening.